All right, in this video, we are going to be solving equations with absolute value. So quick scenario here. So indoors, many people prefer 71 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take three degrees. So what is the common coolest and warmest temperature that people feel comfortable with? So pretty simple just to figure this out. This give or take means it could be more or less by three degrees. So if we're looking for the coolest, we're gonna take our 71 and we're gonna subtract the three degrees and that's gonna make 68 degrees would be the coolest that people feel comfortable with. And then for the warmest, basically the same idea, 71 degrees plus the three for the warmest amount, which would be 74 degrees. So now what we wanna do though is change this into an absolute value equation. Okay, so these are a little bit awkward when we first start getting into them, but here's the equation, the absolute value equation that we're going to be setting up that goes with this scenario here. So it doesn't quite flop out of the brain the way we'd like to, but basically what's going on with this one here, so we're going to rephrase it in absolute value type idea, is the difference between the coolest or the warmest temperature and 71 is 3 degrees. So in, in so what we're saying though is that the amount that people like it to be either the 68 or the 74th for the warmest or the coolest, the difference between that number and 71 is going to be three degrees. So here it is, the difference between the temperature people like it to be and 71 is gonna be three degrees. So this is the way that we do this give or take three degrees or more or less three degrees. It would look like this. So let's just do a quick example so that way we can kind of get back on the same page when it comes to absolute value. It may have been a while. So we have absolute value of A minus 7 plus 15. And we're going to evaluate that when A is 5. So we're basically going to take our absolute value expression and we're going to replace the A with a value of 5. So now we have order of operations next. So we're going to do the 5 minus 7 there because this absolute value is a grouping symbol. So it goes under the P for PEMDAS. And so we have 5 minus 7 makes negative 2. Now the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And then we're still going to add the 15 to that. So it's going to make 17. So some people are still a little confused with the absolute value. So real quick side note here. What's the absolute value of 5? Positive 5. What's the absolute value of negative 5? Positive 5. Just because it's absolute value doesn't mean you're switching the positives and negatives. It's always going to be positive whatever comes out of the absolute value. So by definition, it's distance from 0. So how far is 5 from 0? It's 5. How far is negative 5 from 0? It's also 5. So real quick, we're just going to be looking at some numbers and see which numbers on this number line make this equation true. So zero. So zero minus five makes negative five and the absolute value of negative five is positive five and that does not equal three. How about one? One minus five makes negative four. Absolute value of negative four is positive four, doesn't equal three. How about two? So in this case here, two. We're gonna go two minus five makes negative three. Absolute value of negative three makes positive three, which is equal to three. What about three here? Three minus five is negative two. Absolute value of negative two is positive two, not three. Four, four minus five is negative one. Absolute value is positive one, not three. What about five? Five minus five is zero, makes zero, not three. What about six? Six minus five is one, not three. What about seven? Seven minus five makes two, not three. What about eight? Eight minus five makes three. Absolute value of three does indeed equal three. 9 minus 5 is 4, 10 minus 5 is 5, both are not 3. So we can see here from this number line, we have two numbers that make this absolute value equation true. So here we go, just follow along here. We have absolute value of t minus 1 equals 3. So this is to help you get, wrap your brain around why we do what we do, okay? So we're just going to kind of ignore the t minus 1 there. So in order to make this red box, so we're just going to call it the red box, absolute value of the red box to equal three. So this red box, right? If, if the red box, what's underneath the red box is three, then it's true. The other option too is if this red box is negative three, because we're going to do the absolute value of red box. 
Absolute value of red box, if the red box is negative three, would also make a positive three. So in this case here, either our red box has to equal a positive three or our red box has to equal a negative three. Again, if the red box is three, then this is true. If the red box equals negative three, well, absolute value of negative three does indeed equal positive three. So these are the two cases that we can have. Either red box is three or red box is negative three. So what's underneath that red box? Well, that was t minus one. So now that we have these two cases, we can solve each to figure out what the value for t must be. So add one to both sides here and we get three plus one makes four. And then over here, also going to do the same thing, add one to both sides. t minus one plus one makes z t plus zero is just t. And then th negative three plus the one makes negative two. So there's our two solutions there. And we can try them out again. So four minus one makes positive three. And then the negative two, negative two minus one makes negative three. Absolute value of negative three makes positive three. So solutions, negative two comma four. All right, so go ahead and try this one out. Pause the video and then come on back. So here we go. We got absolute value of 2w minus 3 equals 13. So remember, we're going to break this up into two cases. Case one, where it equal, where the 2w minus 3, what's inside the absolute value equals the positive 13. Or we have the other case, case two, where the 2w minus 3 can also equal a negative 13, right? Because if what's inside the absolute value equals negative 13, it turns to positive and then it makes true statement. So here's our two cases here. We just solve them both separate. So here we go. We're going to add three to both sides. 13 plus three makes 16 and then divide by two. 16 divided by two makes eight. So there's one of our solutions. And then for our negative case here where we're equaling the negative of the number, uh, same, stra uh, same strategy. Uh, this one was add three divided by two. This one, same thing, add three. So negative 13 plus three makes negative 10 and then divide by two. Negative 10 divided by two makes negative five. So both of our solutions there, negative five for one of them, and then the other one is positive eight. So this example does have a little trick that we haven't talked about yet on it. So basically we want to make sure that on our equations, we have the absolute value isolated. So basically this is the way we want it to look. We want it to look like absolute value, then equals, then a number. Well, over here we have the absolute value minus three equals a number. So this minus three, it doesn't belong there. We don't want it there because we want it to look like this. So we're gonna undo this minus three with a plus three to both sides. So now we have the X plus two minus three plus three, no more threes, then the equals, and then 10 plus three makes 13. So this is what we want it to look like. Again, absolute value equals the number. Absolute value equals the number. And now that we have this, now we can go ahead and break it up into our two cases and solve each separate. So for the positive 13, or we also have the other one where it equals the negative 13. And then we solve each separate. So here we go on this one here, subtract two from both sides. So 13 minus two is gonna make 11. And then over here, subtract two from both sides, negative 13 minus two makes a negative 15. So both of our solutions there would be a negative 15 and 11. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, try this one out on your own, and then come on back, see how you did. So remember with any of these, we want to isolate that absolute value. So we want absolute value, absolute value, then the equals, then the number. So in this case here, we have absolute value minus six equals number. So we don't like that minus six there. So we're gonna undo that minus six to get the absolute value, then equals the number. We're gonna add six to both sides there. So no more sixes on the left and then seven plus six makes 13. Now that we have absolute value equals number, now we can break it up into our two cases. So that's where it equals the positive 13 or where it equals the negative 13. Solve each separate here. So, so subtract four from 13 and we end up with nine and then nine divided by three makes three for one of the solutions. Same steps here, subtract four from negative 13 makes a negative 17 and now divide by three. So negative 17 divided by three, three doesn't divide in evenly. So we're just going to leave it as an improper fraction there. So there's our two solutions there. So remember when we're solving these absolute value equations, we do need to make sure that we have the absolute value 
isolated. You won't have to do this on all of them, but some of them you will. You'll have to isolate the absolute value like what we did here, get it by itself, and then break it up into, into the two cases, one where it equals the positive of this number, and then the other case where it equals the negative of this number, and then just solve the way you normally would, except you have two equations to solve instead of just one.